Welcome back uh, to Centre Stage. Uh, Bank Kale Thompson, he's talking and uh, he may be announcing soon his run for Governor Mayor Benero of Lansing. And uh, we're talking about the federal stimulus money. You believe that must have been was 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 mis actually misplaced priorities in terms of how it was used. We have incredible needs in our cities, and we're we have that in common. All of our cities in Michigan, Detroit, Lansing, Flint, in, uh, needs that could be addressed, and uh, that money. Three fourths of it never made it out of the state capitol. The money went through the governor. It went through the legislature instead of coming directly to mayors. That's really unfortunate because we're on the ground floor. Cities know, council people and mayors know where the money needs to go. We know where the potholes are. We know where the business incubation is needed. Uh, we need jobs for our people, you know. And this was an incredible opportunity to make some transformational differences in our cities. That wasn't done. We got a few roads paved, and that's wonderful. But you know, how good is a paved road if you don't have a job to? drive to. What would you have done di differently if you were a state senator, looking at how uh, the, 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 not only the governor, but the lawmakers in Lansing, how they treated this whole budget issue? What would you have done differently? The, uh, please, the, the, the budget mess, it's budget debacle after budget debacle. It's a blame game, Democrat versus Republican. You know, Ben Colet, from my mayor's office, I, I can view the Capitol. I have a good view of it. And I identified, I've been able to identify the two major obstacles to progress over there at the Capitol, Democrats and Republicans. They're so busy blaming each other and trying to get credit and trying to one-up each other that the people's work is not getting done. You look at what's happening with our education system. You look at what happened up, up until the stimulus with our transportation system, our roads, our bridges, our infrastructure. You look at our cities. You look at our employment situation. You know, it, the business of the people is not getting done because they're so worried about who's going to get credit or who's going to get blame. So one thing, that, that's why I say I'm not going to run down my opponents because they're, in a sense, they're equal to, equal to blame. I'm a Democrat. I'm proud of that, but I'm going to work with everybody. I've been endorsed in the past by the Chamber of Commerce, by the UAW, by the unions. I've been able to pull people together, and I intend to do that if I run for governor. I intend to do that. That's job one, is bringing people together under a common vision. What's, your relationship, uh, what's the relationship between you and the governor's office? We've always gotten along. But I've got to be honest that I've been, you know, I've been a little disappointed. I mean, I was disappointed with this stimulus. Would the Michigan Democratic Party, Mark Brewer, support your candidacy? I don't know what Mark Brewer will do. I don't, you know, I worry less about what the people at the top will do. I worry about what, what the no, regular people I, I, will I, do. I say this uh, because, uh, you know, when it comes to the nomination, uh, there's going to be a nomination fight. It's going to be a primary election. We have elections, not coronations. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about the people at the top. Mm -hmm. My concern is for the people on Main Street. I'm tired of the people at the top coming first. We've had enough of taking care of Wall Street. We've had enough of Robin Hood and reverse, steal from the poor and give to the rich. And that's exactly what we've had. You know, I think we need to worry more about our cities and less about Citibank. We need people that are going to look out for the citizens and look out for the common good. And I think word will get out to the people. There's going to be a primary election. You, you struck a word here, urban agenda. What is it and what are you talking about? It means investing in our people, investing in our cities. Cities are what, where people live. It's where the action is. Michigan has allowed our cities to deteriorate at our detriment. The, the states that are doing the best have cities in them. People identify with cities. When your friend goes out of town uh, and maybe goes to Chicago, when they come back, they don't, you say, what were you up to? They don't say, well, I was in I Illinois for the weekend. They say we went to Chicago, and they go to Boston, and they go to Detroit. People identify with cities. Michigan got away from that, and we didn't promote our cities. As I say, I remember as a teenager coming down to Detroit, to Trapper's Alley, and having a good time and seeing that Detroit was on the move, and then something happened along the way. You know, we, we, we stopped that investment, and we walked away from our cities, and you see the development now around many of our major cities. As I say, Detroit, Flint, Pontiac, you see the trouble that they're having. An urban agenda means reinvesting. It means investing in education. In, in, in infrastructure and investing in people. M but much of what happened, or some of what happened in Michigan, uh, some would argue legitimately that, in fact, it's as a result of the eight years of the Bush administration and how that economy has really affected Michigan. And certainly the Bush administration is not innocent. And the Clinton administration isn't innocent, mm -hmm. okay? Because too many of them in Washington, I call them Republicrats. They forget where they came from, and they let Wall Street call the shots. So you're right. In fairness, Washington has not been helpful either. But where was Michigan, Bengali, where were our leaders 
demanding from Washington what Washington should be doing. I went to Washington to stand up for the auto industry because nobody else was doing it. I organized a group of mayors from around the country of automotive cities because there was no organization. We went to Washington and we got an audience. We got through to Bush and we got through to Obama. We're still going through and talking to his administration to make sure that they don't forget about Main Street because there's a lot of Goldman Sachs people up there. You know, you look at the Fed and you look at Treasury. You can't just let things go on their own on automatic pilot. You can't assume that because President Obama is on our side that the rest of the administration is going to fall into line. We go to Washington and we hold their feet to the fire. We need leaders, a governor who is going to speak loudly. We can't be dismissed as the rust belt. I resent it, you know, but in Washington, they still look at us as a place that once was. They look at us as the rust belt. I consider us the vital architecture of the industrial uh, future of this country. Some people think we can give up on manufacturing. So you're right, Ben Kale. Yes, there's, there's plenty of blame to share. There's blame in Washington, but we need a fighter in Michigan, in Lansing who will go to Washington, get but, our fair uh, share. But what role do you think the congressional delegation in Michigan ought to do or ought to be playing then? They play a role. You know what they are? They're members of the team. But you know what the governor is? The coach or the quarterback. The governor should be in there corralling those people, saying, this is the game plan. We're going to go in there. Now get in there and fight. And, and, and the governor needs to be leading that. And I'm just afraid we haven't had that kind of leadership. And we're a donor state. We give our taxes to Washington. It's a one-way trip. We need that money coming back to Washington. Detroit, Lansing, Flint, our cities are worthy of investment. Our people are worthy of investment. We make things in Michigan. I'm not going to apologize for that. If, let's say, you know, let's think here, if, if in fact the Michigan Democratic Party throws its support behind John Cherry, the presumptive nominee, as the governor would call it, uh, would you then run as an independent? Outside of the Democratic Party? I, I can't see that, no. I'm a Democrat. Uh, I think I can run from the center of the Democratic Party. I think I can reach across the aisle to the Republicans, to the independents, and say we're in this together. And my point, Ben Kale, is we've got to stop this Democrat-Republican as though one party has all the answers. I'm going to put together a plan. And I'm going to say to Democrats, Republicans, independents, to the people of this state, this is my plan to bring back Michigan. If you've got a better plan, I want to know about it. But this is my plan. And All if right. you elect me, this is the plan I'm going to run with. And it's going to move Michigan forward. Thank you very much, Mayor Bonero. My pleasure. When we come back, our roundtable will assess what you just, some of the things that you've said. Thank you. Stay tuned on Center Stage.